Hey everybody, Nathan Ronan, CFA here with another update for level three candidates who are about to sit for their CFA level three exam. And it's just a few days away for you and for many others globally. Hopefully this update will help you out with a couple of tips before you take that exam and try to conquer and crush the essays. If you'd like to continue hearing this update, please press the subscribe button now and the notifications button so that you are a subscriber and you continue to receive these updates as I post them on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. And I think you'll find them very helpful, hopefully not for very long because you're gonna pass the level three exam and become charter holders. But if you don't, then if you're gonna to have to take the exam in August of 2024 or sometime in 2025 or even 2026, these tips can help you out on the essays. Okay, actually it's, uh, in New Jersey, the east coast of the United States in an unexpected snowstorm. Okay, so I'm sitting here. What am I doing? No, I'm not doing that. I'm just actually sitting here grading a whole bunch of level three essays from the mock essay exams that I administered. And constantly I see things that are common themes, common mistakes, common traps that level three candidates are falling into. Also things that people call me up about or email me about. And so I want to help everybody out here. So listen up. If you're going to take the level three exam and you really want to crush these essays, because the essays are, in many cases, the deciding factor, not the exclusive factor, but could be the deciding factor for many level three candidates, whether or not they pass the level three exam. Here's something you should be careful about. Don't make the grader infer anything. Now be careful on what I'm saying. When I say don't make the grader or graders infer anything, that means that when they're reading your answer in the essays, the answer should be very clear to the point and provide any support that's necessary if asked for. Okay. What a lot of candidates will do, for example, and expect the grader to infer, and of course they're not doing this on purpose, but they're, you know, they're under stress and they're running and rushing and through the exam is, for example, they'll ask you to uh, come up with the number of futures contracts that they need to hedge the interest rate risk. And you'll come up with 425 contracts. You're gonna buy them? You're gonna be selling them? What are you gonna be doing? Are you shorting? Are you longing? I have no idea. Now. I could see through the math if you come up with a positive number that that's buy, and if you come up with a negative number that that's sell, but there you go. You're not making it clear for the grader, are you buying or are you selling? Gotta let them know. And many times if the essay question even asks it, which it could, you're gonna have to say it anyway. But this is an important point because what you're doing is you're showing the grader that you're really not sure if you're buying or selling. And it looks like you're trying to get around it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important point. Just because you calculate 425 contracts, maybe they'll give you some credit for it. Maybe they won't. But they're going to look at whether you're buying or selling. Because if you're on the wrong side of the, uh, of the transaction, you're going to have losses. <laughs> so you got to be very careful about that. Make sure that you are complete in your answer and that you clearly indicate to the grader what you're doing. Here's the key to, test, to the test. If, you, if the grader has to ask how, why, when, what, so what, points are coming off, or you're not gonna get full credit. The grader is not supposed to infer anything because if they're only supposed to grade what you actually put down on the screen, what you put down on your exam, okay? Nothing more, nothing less. Now, you don't have to, now some people will take this to an extreme and they will start explaining what's a put option or what's a call option, and that's not what they're asking you for. If you're going to long the futures contract, or sell the futures contract, let them know that you're doing that, and then give them the number of contracts if you're asked to calculate it. But don't leave it at just 425, okay? Because it's not clear. That's one thing. Also, when you come up with um, answers like, for let's say they ask you to come up with the uh, percentage change in the price of the bond, like you know one of those duration convexity kind of calculations, the percentage change in the price of the bond. Don't put 0.01435 percent. 
If the answer is 1.45%, that's what you need to put, 1.45%, not 0.0145%, because there's a big difference between 1.45% and 0.0145%. Be careful with the percentage signs. Don't leave the percentage signs out. If they ask for it, put it in there, 1.45%, because they can see the math, but and, and they'll give you hopefully partial credit for the math if partial credit is being awarded. But if no partial credit is being awarded and you have to put up a number right on the line uh, and you put 0 0.145, 0 0.145, whatever, 0.0145%, that's wrong. It's 1.45%. Be careful about those kinds of mistakes. I see that all the time. That's a, that's a rookie mistake. Okay, You don't know your percentages. You don't know the difference between whole numbers and percentages. And then another thing I would also recommend to you is if you are asked to give two reasons for anything or two justifications. Don't give three, don't give four, stick it at two, make it your two top answers, one, two, clearly delineated, number one, number two, with however you want, with numbers one, two, or two bullet points or A, B, whatever. But make sure that it's clear for the greater what your two reasons are, what your two justifications are, what your two critiques are, what your two, um, you know, metrics are, whatever it is, because that's what they're going to be looking at. They want you to fit the answer key as much as possible, and they want it to be easy to grade. People that go on a whole, you know, Bible-type answer with lots and lots of information that is nice, but is not really relevant to answering the question, doesn't get awarded brownie points or extra credit, okay? It's the answer is either correct or incorrect, and then they go right to the justification or the explanation or the support that you give it. These are things that I think you should keep in mind when you're self-grading your exams, when you're doing any additional mock exams, but most importantly, that you do on the date of your exam. Make sure that you are not providing more answers than are required or less, but the correct number. Make sure that you clearly outline your answers, whether they're euros or dollars or percent signs, so that it's clear what you're doing and that you're not saying 0.0145% when it's really 1.45%. And also make sure that you are not doing any kind of, creating any kind of situation where you're asking the grader to infer your answer by not labeling it with buying or selling or longing or shorting. Another example, CDS. Are you selling the CDS? Or, or buying the CDS? Are you selling protection or buying protection? Are you shorting or longing the CDS? Make sure you know that kind of stuff because a lot of times people will say, oh, I'm selling the CDS, I'm shorting it. Eh, 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 eh. And, if you got, and if you don't know why, check your, check your material. Okay, so be careful how you answer these essays. It really does matter. And if you need any other advice or help, I'm happy to help you out. If you're looking to take the exam in August, I, I advise you to use my videos and to use also my mock exams. You could check me out at chalkandboard.org. That's chalk and board, C-H-A-L-K and A-N-D, board, B-O-A-R-D, chalkandboard.org. If you have any questions, you can email me, text me, WhatsApp me, whatever. Happy to help you out as long as it's exam related. Have a great day. Good luck to you on the exams, level three people. And I hope it's a pass for you so that you're not looking at this exam again and that you get your charter. Good luck.